Hello everyone, welcome to Timeless Tennis. Coach Brad again here with another lesson for you. Last video, I talked about why to spin a tennis ball and now how to spin a tennis ball. So let's get right into it. But first I do wanna add a disclaimer. Please, a compliment to you all for wanting to learn, for wanting to be better and improve at tennis and everything. But don't overthink. It's so easy when you're on that pursuit of knowledge and you're on that journey that odyssey of improvement, as I call it, to read and study as much as possible, but then we can get too much in our heads and we can overthink out here and not do it right. And there are some very good sayings in the world, some slogans like just do it, which is actually pretty spot on because athletes, when we're in the zone, are we thinking? No. And you've been in the zone before, even if just once, and you were on autopilot. So we're going to get you there. I'm going to teach you how to do it but we're not gonna overthink along the way. So getting right into it, how to produce spin on a tennis ball. First thing first, it's about your strings. Now I want you to take a moment and think, you have two options. Which strings are more important on a tennis racket? You have a 50-50 choice. They're either the ones that run up and down, or they're the runs, ones that run side to side. Go ahead and vote now. And if it, just in case you guessed wrong, don't worry, you're gonna be fine. The answer is the ones that run up and down. Those are the mains. The mains and the crosses. The mains are the most important strings, like main street, main string. They are more important. Uh, they're at the center of town, if you will. The reason they're the most important is because you set the racket sideways to hit. So now they're this way. So don't feel bad if you guess crosses because they do switch places, you see? So don't feel, don't feel bad if you got it wrong. The reason the mains aren't most important is because as you see, if I set them and I go up the ball, my fingers can catch and actually make top spin. These crosses don't make any spin. Sorry, crosses just hold the tension of the mains. So if you want to make back spin, you take the mains and you go down, down the ball. Simply put this way. And you see that they catch and they make spin. Again, crosses, they don't really do much. They just hold, tent, hold the mains in place, but that's okay. We love crosses anyway. So just to kind of prove the point, here is a racket with the mains only. And uh, apologies to my sponsor. And you're gonna be a little upset because I didn't draw the logo on the strings, but we're gonna ask for forgiveness and instead of permission this time. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and spin one ball with these. I would not recommend this at home. These are uh, going to be super loose because again they have nothing to hold them in place so you'll actually see that I should be able to create a little bit of top spin with this green ball but don't be surprised if it kind of launches way up in the air because they're just going to be like a super trampoline. So again oh yeah there it is just like I told you it was going to bounce up really high. Um, it did make top spin though again I'm going to just do this one gently as I can and still try to get it in. And you see that is having top spin with just mains, and that is exactly how it works. Uh, we'll try one more right-handed just for everybody at home. And don't be surprised if this ball goes super high, but it actually does have over the top top spin. So there you go, mains. Congratulations if you got it correct at home. As we know, when you're doing top spin, just take those mains and take them up the ball. If you want the top spin, if you want back spin, take them down the ball. But best practices. Why do we do top spin and back spin, remember? Obviously control, but it's about your target. If you want a short target, back spin. If you want a long target, top spin. The motion is the exact same for those words I just said. Remember long target? So longer motion. Long, take those mains and just keep going through the ball and you will get effortless, easy, repeatable top spin. Okay? It's much easier when you take the racket out and just keep going through the ball to create top spin. Back spin, done with a short motion. Short target, short motion. Easy to get it in every time. A lot, sometimes you're gonna see people do these crazy big slice shots, like trying to do a big old wind up, messing around. You're gonna whiff the ball 
you're going to mess up. You're going to miss it nine times out of ten if you try to do too, too much, as you see. You're, you're going to miss it a lot. But if you keep that swing short, you're going to make it almost every time. Short target, short motion, slice. Long target, long motion, top spin. Okay, easy to keep it in, keep it in mind. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of blow some people's minds here with the top spin. One more tip that's gonna really help you guys out. Top spin and tennis in general, it's not really a wristy thing. Your wrist is actually gonna stay pretty straight when you play tennis, believe it or not. It's the angle of your racket that does all the work. It's kind of like a golf club face, except instead of facing open, it's facing down. And if you really know your grips, and I will cover this elsewhere in another video, but if you even know like an Eastern grip, if you just hold your wrist perfectly straight and hold an Eastern grip correctly, you see that the racket angle is actually a little bit crooked, a little bit down. That's what we want. That's what you want when you hit a tennis ball. If you're hitting topspin, you just take those mains and go out and through and keep accelerating. Long, elegant swing, keeping it crooked. And you see how easy the top spin becomes. It's automatic. Go ahead and Google uh, a pro at contact and you'll see their, their racket face is crooked. My favorite is I like to see Roger's, Roger Federer's contact or Rafa Nadal's contact. Rafa tends to be up here at the shoulder because he uses a Western grip, but his face is slightly crooked at contact. Raf Roger's was almost always crooked at contact. If you never saw it before, it's going to surprise you and that's okay but you don't hit a tennis ball with a perfectly square face. I'm sorry. You really don't if you're a higher level and you want to get a serious spin. So just to wrap up this video, embrace the crooked, and I really hope this helps you now and in the future. I will now hit a couple shots, all different hands, all different styles, forehands, backhands, just to show off this point. So let's start out, we'll be nice to the lefties. Let's go lefty forehand first. Gonna go with that crooked face, long swing. And you see the top spin, nice on the line right there. And just one more, I'm gonna kind of rip it. There we go. Some righty forehands, crooked face, longer swing. Need to be a little more crooked. <laughs> there we go. Ah, that's perfect. And that's just going to be so easy and simple. Let's do some righty backhands one-handed. There's a pretty nice one, crooked again. And longer. Need to go a little bit longer on that target. Let's do a slice, short motion. Well, let's not do that. Let's not count that one. <laughs> Switching hands has its, has its cost sometimes. There we go. That's a beauty. And then let's go... Uh, Go to a lefty backhand. Long swings for top spin, short swings for backspin. And you can do anything you want to a tennis ball. I hope this helps you now and in the future.